Hello my dear friends welcome back to the channel and this is your friend Dr Suresh Anvi in our last video we learned the composition of various elastomeric impression materials and in this video we will be discussing about the various properties the techniques which are very important and most of the exams are focused on these important aspects in rubber based impression material elastomeric impression materials are classified into four categories based on the consistency but let us first understand how was this classification derived when a new impression material is manufactured 0.5 ml of that impression material is placed between two flat metal disc and a force of 1.5 newton is applied on this material and under pressure this impression material is going to form a disc the impression materials which are thick in consistency will form a smaller diameter disc and the materials which are thinner in consistency will form a larger disc and as you can see in the chart depending on the diameter they are classified as light body medium heavy body and putty consistency as learned in the last video there are four categories of chemicals used to make elastomeric impression material but that doesn't mean that each chemical is available in four consistencies for example there is no putty consistency in polysulfide and that's why you have to use a customized tray for polysulfide impression materials however in addition silicon you have more than four consistencies and in condensation silicon we just have the light body and putty consistency and in polyether we have light medium and heavy consistency the obvious question in students mind here is why do you need so many consistencies and the answer is very simple there are times where when you do preparation on the tooth the margin is very thin and having a thin consistency impression material will record this area in much better way these thin consistency impression materials tend to have less filler and that's why they flow better now you may ask me if the light body is so good in making impressions then why do you need thicker consistencies that's because the light body has more polymers and less filler this leads to more polymerization shrinkage so in order to overcome this disadvantage we form the major bulk of impression with impression materials which have a thicker consistency and if you are using putty that also helps to push the light body impression material over the two structure do check my video on dental composite to understand polymerization shrinkage in a easy way the link will be in the description now let's learn about mixing of these impression materials the first method is called as hand mixing where we take two paste and mix it with our hand the second method is called as static auto mixing where we use cartridge with special units which have tips attached to it and when the material is coming out from the special tips both the paste are uniformly mixed the third one which is the best way of mixing the impression material is called as dynamic mechanical mixing where large packets of the catalyst and base is put inside the machine and you just have to press the button and you will end up getting a very nice consistency impression over the tray but these auto mix machines are very expensive and also the putty should be always needed in hand and you cannot mix it with static or dynamic mechanical mixers now let's learn about the working and setting time of various rubber based impression materials overall the polyether has the lowest setting and working time whereas the silicon falls in the mid range and the polysulfide provides the longest working and setting time of course there is something called as snap set in polyether impression material and i will try to explain it based on this graph if you see the setting of the impression material gradually happens in most of the rubber based impression materials but in polyether at one specific point the material starts setting faster than its earlier phase and this transition is called as snap set of the polyether impression material now let's talk about the cost of this various impression materials of course if you consider all the impression materials then the alginate which we learned few days back is the cheapest one and the most expensive of all the impression materials which have studied is the polyether please note that although agar is considered to be cheaper here but compared to the equipments 
it may end up costing more than the polyether itself as per the stradovant polyether and the addition silicon cost around 12 dollar per impression in foreign countries of course we do use the tips along with the static auto mixing unit and we always tend to think these will add up to our cost but the textbook clearly says that by hand mixing we are wasting 3 to 4 times of material than what we waste in the tips but i would also like to highlight the information from other books and that mentions addition silicon as the most expensive impression material now let's learn the next important property and that is the ability to flow if you have better flow in impression materials they can reach the area better the polysulfide has a highest flow however there is another important property called as pseudo plasticity with addition silicon and polyether and this basically means that by increasing the pressure you can increase the flow of this impression materials and this led to introduction of monophase type of impression materials where you can use a single viscosity impression material in the tray and the tooth itself and under pressure this material will flow better as per the textbooks it is the viscosity that is the flow which is the most important factor for making impressions which have maximum detail and now we are learning the most important property that is the dimensional change dimensional change means suppose if you have made an impression and then you pour but if the impression doesn't match the actual preparation then it means the dimensions of the impressions have changed and this will give us improper restorations now there are basically five reasons for this dimensional change the first reason may be because of polymerization shrinkage or the second being the by product like water in polysulfide and alcohol in condensation silicon third may be because of thermal contraction because we are removing the impression from oral temperature and we are getting it to the room temperature the fourth may be because of imbibition that is absorption of water disinfectant or because of high humidity which is more commonly seen in addition silicon with surfactants and then the last reason may be because of incomplete recovery once you remove the impression material from the tooth by now it should be easy to remember that polysulfide and condensation silicon have poor dimensional stability and the maximum shrinkage happens within first hour of making the impression so in order to overcome this issue you should pour the impression within 30 minutes if the impression is made from condensation silicon or polysulfide this means that the addition silicon and polyether are more dimensionally stable which allows us to pour them even after one week without losing the dimensions of the impression also you can do multiple pour in the same impression if you are using these dimensionally stable impression materials out of all the elastic impression materials it is the addition silicon which is most dimensionally stable and the least being the condensation silicon in the elastomeric category but overall it is the hydrocolloids which are least stable now let's learn the another important property which is routinely asked in the exam and that is the wettability since polyether has the lowest contact angle it is truly hydrophilic and we have discussed the reason in the last video although the addition silicon is also hydrophobic but because it is now available with the surfactant it is made hydrophilic so overall it is the condensation silicon which is the least hydrophilic impression material and the most hydrophilic impression material is the hydrocolloid and then it is the polyether in the rubber base impression material then the another important property is the stiffness if the impression material is stiff then there is always chance of losing the highly mobile tooth during the impression procedure and overall it is the polyether which has the highest stiffness that's why it is the impression material which is very difficult to remove from the undercuts and then comes the tear strength and this indicates the ability of the material to withstand the tearing in the thin interproximal areas and i have discussed this in a very nice way in alginate in order to improve the tear strength in rubber base impression materials you can rapidly remove the impression from the mouth that is as soon as the seal is broken you should remove the impression with a quick snap rather than by a slow motion so overall it is the polysulfide which 
has highest tear strength and then the lowest is the condensation silicon in the elastomeric category but overall it is the hydrocolloid impression material now since you understood the properties let us briefly go through the techniques and basically there are two ways of classifying the impression techniques the first is based on the type of consistency you have used to make the impression and the second the number of steps involved in the impression making based on the consistency you can classify it as monophase or double mix impression techniques in the monophase we use the same mix of medium viscosity materials in both stock tray and the syringe in the double mix technique we use a heavy body impression material in the tray and the light body material over the two structure the putty wash technique where the impression technique is divided based on steps we can classify them in two categories the first technique is called a single stage technique which is very similar to the double mix technique where we take putty over the stock tray and then inject the light body over this putty and the tooth and then place the putty tray over the two structure so here in one step we are using both the light body and putty the second being the two stage putty technique where we make a impression with putty by keeping a polythene sheet on the teeth and then once this material is set we add the light body over this already set putty and then keep the impression tray back on the two structure and this is called as a two stage technique which is considered to be better for impression making this chart can help you to remember the important mcq questions which appear from the properties of rubber based impression material and i hope that these two videos help you to understand the elastomeric impression material click the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you like the video bye for now